Welcome to Western Water Weekly. Here are the Colorado River Basin stories for the week ending July 26, 2025. We begin in California, where a major step is being taken to bring salmon back to the San Joaquin River. The Bureau of Reclamation has awarded a $93 million construction contract for the Arroyo Canal Fish Screen and Sac Dam Fish Bypass Project. For decades, Sac Dam has blocked native fish, especially spring-run Chinook salmon, from migrating upstream to spawn. The new bypass will give these fish a clear path to complete their life cycle. A fish screens will also be installed to keep them out of irrigation canals. Construction begins this September and will take about three years. Once complete, this project will help restore salmon populations while keeping water deliveries flowing to farms in the area. A new bill introduced by members of Congress aims to fix a long-standing crisis, the lack of clean water in Native American communities. The Tribal Access to Clean Water Act proposes billions in new funding and expanded support through agencies like the Indian Health Service, the Department of Agriculture, and the Bureau of Reclamation. Right now, nearly half of homes on tribal lands lack access to clean drinking water or basic sanitation. This legislation would help tribes build and manage their own water infrastructure, while cutting through the red tape that's often held projects back. Supporters say this is about public health, tribal sovereignty, and honoring federal responsibilities. The bill now heads to congressional committees, with advocates hoping for bipartisan progress. In a historic move, the Arizona Department of Water Resources has approved its first-ever order, allowing groundwater to be transported from the Harquahala Basin to the Phoenix metro area. The cities of Buckeye and Queen Creek will be allowed to withdraw water that was set aside more than 30 years ago for future urban use. The new authorization allows up to 11,000 acre-feet of water to be pumped each year, enough to support growth, boost economic development, and diversify the region's water portfolio. The approval drew strong support from city officials, farmers, and state leaders who say it balances conservation, growth, and education funding thanks to potential involvement from the State Land Department. Nebraska has filed suit against Colorado in the United States Supreme Court, claiming that Colorado is violating the 1923 South Platte River Compact. The complaint argues that Colorado has deprived Nebraska of its fair share of water and is blocking construction of the Perkins County Canal a major infrastructure project designed to capture water during the winter season. Nebraska says it has already lost over 1.3 million acre-feet of water and that Colorado's current water practices harm Nebraska farmers and cities. Colorado officials fired back, calling the lawsuit meritless and warning that Nebraska's attempt to use eminent domain across state lines could spark a prolonged legal battle. The case now awaits a decision from the Supreme Court on whether it will take up the matter. In Utah, reservoir levels are dropping fast. The latest state update shows that water storage dropped by 10% between June and July, far more than the usual 2% seen during this time of year. 100% of the state is classified as being in moderate to severe drought. Water restrictions have begun in some communities, and the Great Salt Lake, which peaked in April, is now shrinking again. The state's conservation efforts, like its Slow the Flow campaign and agricultural optimization programs, remain critical as summer temperatures soar. We often think of plastic pollution as bottles and bags, but a new editorial in Nature Water warns that microscopic plastic particles may pose an even greater threat. These particles can carry chemical residues, disrupt ecosystems, and even spread harmful bacteria. Some scientists believe they are altering the way nutrients move through water systems as world leaders prepare for the final round of negotiations on a global plastics treaty this August in Geneva. These findings add urgency to efforts to combat plastic pollution worldwide. A new report from NASA and Arizona State University confirms that Arizona is losing groundwater at an alarming pace. Between 2002 and 2024, the state lost nearly 28 million acre-feet, equivalent to the full capacity of Lake Mead. The study shows that groundwater loss more than doubled in parts of western and southeastern Arizona during the past decade. Heavy agricultural use and a multi-year drought are the primary culprits. However, there is some good news. Areas with stricter groundwater management rules, like the newly designated Active Management Area in the Wilcox Basin, are faring better. New tools like NASA's OpenET are also helping farmers make smarter irrigation decisions, offering a path toward more sustainable agriculture. This week's United States Drought Monitor report shows a mixed picture. While rainstorms brought relief to the Midwest and parts of the Intermountain West, the Southwest remains dry. In Arizona, isolated monsoon storms brought up to three inches of rain in some areas, helping a bit. 
but reservoir levels across the Colorado River system are still critically low. Lake Powell and Lake Mead each sit at just 31% of capacity. Meanwhile, California's major reservoirs are in good shape for now, thanks to a wet winter. But in states like Utah and Wyoming, conditions continue to worsen in some areas. The outlook for the West remains dry, with above-normal temperatures expected through the end of July. That's it for this week's Roundup. For more details, full articles, and source links, head over to westernwater.com, where we publish daily updates Monday through Saturday. Thanks for watching and see you next week on Western Water Weekly.